I'm gonna go ahead and eat. I'll try and get a few more photos, but I can't hold them off any longer. So this is Bolgene sauce over pasta. Well, hi, I'm Amy, Amy Roloff, and I'm in my little kitchen. It is Sunday today, a gorgeous day. I kind of wish I was outside, but we're having some friends over, Chris and I, and I thought I would try and make bolognese. Bol 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 I think that's right. That a very good Italian sauce that you put over uh, pasta. And I will tell you this, I, because it is, it's a variation of what we would call our basic meat sauce that we make here, um, you know, it's not that I'm an Italian cook or anything, um, so I had to go ask Lisa, you know, red or white wine, or there's so many different things out there, just little slight variations to all of these different recipes, so this is going to kind of be my take on it. I think because I'm, uh, I am using beef, some of these more traditional bol 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 uh, sauce, um, especially I think in the middle or up north of Italy, they use more of a white wine. I'm gonna go ahead and use a red wine because I am using beef. I didn't exactly have just pork, so my recipe is gonna say just ground pork. But here, because it was in the fridge, it's a slight kind of like Italian pork. So anyway, I'm not gonna really add any spices to it. So I got done cooking up the beef and the pork. Now I'm gonna, uh, so there's pancetta in here. You've got kind of that mixture because you're making this type of sauce. I've got onions, carrots, and celery all right here. They're all cut up. And you know I don't cut onions when I'm doing a video because it makes my eyes water and looks like I'm just crying and having an absolute miserable time, which I'm not. My biggest debate is um, tomato paste. But if you're gonna add a can of crushed tomatoes with their juice, I think you need something to help thicken it up, even if it does cook for a long time. I mean, so much will evaporate, but I think you need a little bit of tomato paste in order to thicken up, uh, thicken it up a little bit. So I will add tomato paste to this uh, Beaujene uh, sauce. In fact, I really can't wait to maybe one day in my lifetime, before I die, actually go to that part of Italy. Because I've been to the key elements, Rome, Venice, um, Florence. Rome, Venice, Florence. I think that's it those three major tourists, but I'd love to go to Southern Italy or uh, in Tuscany. Anyway, that's a side note, people. So I think what I'm gonna do now, I've, al I've already cooked my meat because this sauce should cook at least for a couple hours, really on low and simmer, so all the flavors and everything can just kind of meld together and it helps evaporate some of the water in the sauce. So I'm gonna cut up um, pancetta, which is kind of like Italian bacon. We're gonna cut that up a little bit in little bits and pieces. We're gonna get that going in the saucepan. And then after I uh, brown up th this pancetta, then we're gonna go ahead with the carrots, the onions, and the celery, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna cut this up. Because you want everything to have a little bits and pieces. This is gonna cook up really quick. I don't have it as thin as you might uh, get pancetta in the store. So you can have it a little, cut a little bit thicker as well. That way you have more heartier pieces. It's hard to cut this one, it's not cold. And I kind of think I'm gonna like this. It's been a long time since I kind of officially made this sauce. I would have to say a long time. 
or let's let's put it this way. It's been a long time since I've really paid attention into what really goes into making this Boulgenet sauce. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. Any of you out there that's, you know, truly Italian and have that Italian history and cooking and cooking with grandma and your mom and stuff, I do apologize if I'm totally obliterating <laughs> that word. I have a tendency to do that. And to tell you the truth, I have no idea why. Okay, well, I'll be able to break up some of this when it gets in there. Okay, we've got that going. So we're gonna head on over to the stove, get this start, get this cooking. It won't take very long and then we'll get going on the rest. Okay, so I'm cooking up the pancetta here. It'll take a while because, you know, it's like bacon. So a lot of the grease, or a lot of the fat, I should say, is gonna be uh, cooking down. So it'll take a little bit in order for it to get crisp. But you don't wanna to go too fast. So it's browning up here a little bit. So we have, I don't know, maybe about five more minutes to go. Okay, I took out my pancetta, and this was probably about four to six slices. I feel like I wanted to, I would like to add a little bit more, but four to six. So we're just gonna saute these onions up a little bit. I just drained a little bit of the grease. But we're just gonna cook these until... Sorry, the fan was on, people, <laughs> because um, it gets kinda crazy in here. Anyway, the pancetta. This is about four to six slices. I feel like I should add more, but I'm just gonna leave it here. And so right now I'm just... So, uh, sauteing, cooking down the onions a little bit. So until they just become translucent. I'll bring you over here. And I left, you know, the uh, grease in there. But yeah, this will cook down for a little bit. Then I'll add the carrots and the celery. This sauce definitely uh, goes in stages. As I'm looking at the clock, I'm hoping I can get the rest of the stages done in about 15 minutes. So we're just gonna turn on the heat just a little bit, get rid of some of this grease. Oh yeah, I think the thing I forgot to mention was um, you, you want to cut up your vegetables in very tiny little pieces. You don't want these big, huge chunks of onion, celery, and carrots. And look at this, guess what I didn't do? So we're gonna go back to the kitchen counter and chop up my carrots and celery. Oops. So I'm gonna turn this down and then go back to what I forgot to do. Okay, my onions are still sauteing over there, as I mentioned. Um, silly me, I sliced them up, but I forgot to chop up the carrots and the celery into, you know, just really as, as finely, as, as fine of a chop as you can get without using a food processor. And you know what, people, this probably would be easier in a food processor. But as I mentioned before, I don't know, I just like the feel of doing a lot of this stuff by hand. But boy, I tell you, a food processor and all those other little gadgets definitely make life a little easier and probably a little quicker in the kitchen. And I do have a food processor, that's the funny thing. One of these days, because it is very badly needed. I'm gonna clean out my um, pantry and kind of reorganize it. And maybe if I put the food processor down a little bit lower, instead of having to climb on a, on a ladder to get things, I would probably use it a little bit more, but we'll see. Okay, I've got this little bunch. I think that's good. So we'll cut up the rest of the carrots. And I've got the temperature on the pot over here on low because I don't want the onions to overcook without getting this stuff 
in there with it. Okay. I'm just gonna keep, you know, the one thing about this though, it kind of bounces off the cutting board. <laughs> the carrots go on the floor. Too bad Felix doesn't like carrots that much. What in the world? I'm trying not to do, I'm trying not to go too fast so all the carrots don't end up on the floor. I mean, we definitely don't want that. Okay, I think I've got these cut fine enough. Okay, there we go. Let me cut up the celery. Okay. And how many carrots did I have? I probably, I had one really big carrot. Cause you know how when you buy packages of carrots, sometimes the carrots are big, sometimes they're medium or kind of have to use more than one. So I use one very big, uh, one big one, and then kind of one small one. So it really depends on the carrots. I would say one to two carrots. And then again, it really depends on how many people you're feeding. I'm sure we're gonna have leftovers here, which tell you the truth, I have no problem in that. I think the one thing I love about leftovers sometimes, it helps me uh, to catch up on writing all of these recipes because I do fall behind and I get so mad at myself. So I gotta go over it and make sure I captured everything, right? Measurements and all that stuff. Just like how I forgot to cut the carrot and the celery. Okay, we're gonna dump the carrots in the pan. We're gonna turn up the heat a little bit. Let that cook for a second because I don't think the celery is gonna take that long. So I'll see you over there. I forget that these ceramic pans, but anyway, carrots and onions are cooking up here very nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the celery. And I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some garlic, because I forgot to do that too. Here I thought I was gonna be all prepared for you guys. So I'm just gonna let this cook up for a minute. Why I go cut up about two cloves of garlic. Okay, you probably can't see the garlic on here because of the, um, the orange uh, part of the cutting board here from the carrots, but anyway. I have about two large, no, but yeah, about two larger uh, cloves and two smaller ones. So I would say two large cloves or maybe two to three, three cloves. It all depends, but don't overpower it with garlic. That's not the, I, from what I read and from what I gather, garlic is not the most powerful thing in this whole dish. I think it's the simmering of the sauce. I think it's the, you know, adding just that hint of cream, a little bit of cream, um, kind of balances out the acidity of the, uh, you know, tomato paste, tomato sauce. Then you got that nice richness of red wine. Like I said, I debated whether to add red or white wine because I have tomato, tomatoes and tomato paste, but so I don't know. I think next time maybe I'll try it with red wine and see how that goes. But for today, we're gonna have red wine. And just a little bit of tomato paste. Okay, here we go. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in these chopped garlic in my pan over here. So, okay, things are cooking nicely. Okay, just gonna make a little center in here. Add the pancetta, get that warmed up. I don't want to make sure I don't burn <coughs> the garlic, so I'm going to keep stirring it around. Pancetta has been added. Now we're going to go ahead and add all of this lusciousness meat. And I think once the wine gets in here, it will slowly break down and cook the meat. Okay, I'm gonna go over here and get the, um, oh no, I have it right here. So I just wanna show you. Some of you guys probably have done this yourselves, but that's what it looks like so far. So I'm gonna add in the tomato paste, get the meat, all the veggies coated with it. But also this will help cook it down a little bit, kind of give it that rustic, rustic feel flavor to it. You know me, I wanna make sure I get every little bit out of my can, out of the can. So we're going to kind of, I want to make sure that the meat and everything gets coated with this tomato paste. That way it's not all in one big clump, but it, it's getting kind of like cooked in to the meat, adding all of these flavors together. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, this is what it looks like. We'll just let this go on for a few more minutes. Then I'm going to, what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna add in the wine, get the wine flavored. So really, what I've really learned about this sauce is that the sauce goes in layers and that helps build in the flavors and build it up to this nice, rich, hearty sauce. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the wine. Um, this is from a local winery, Dauntless. I just found them out and so because I think if you drink wine, you should add it into your cooking as well. Because if you don't, if you add red wine or white wine, but you actually don't drink it, I'm not quite sure why the food would taste the best. So, we're gonna add in a cup of wine. Oh dear, oh yeah, there we go. So about a cup, here we go. I'm gonna turn up the heat just slightly, just so it has, the wine has a chance to be incorporated, but also kind of cook off some of that alcohol. So this will probably, I don't know, take another like 10 minutes. In fact, I think while this is cooking down, just a little bit more, oh. Man, you can just smell it. So good. I think I'm gonna pour my glass, myself a glass. There we go. Set it over here. Okay. I think the wine has cooked down. 
I'm gonna bring you guys over here. It's definitely looking rich, I love it. So good. Okay, so I'm gonna add in one can, 28 ounces of crushed I'm just going to add one cup of chicken stock or chicken broth and a bay leaf because we can always add more chicken stock to loosen up the sauce if it, if it, if it becomes too soft. I'm going to continue to cook this on medium high for just a minute. Then I'm going to turn it down to a low simmer. And this should sit and cook and simmer. Oh, and then I'm going to add a bay leaf. This, um, I would say at least an hour, two to three is better. But I may not have three hours right now. So I'm going to take what I can get. So I added two bay leaves. Just push that down a little bit so it... Some of the flavors can kind of mellow in there. I'm gonna tip it up and show you guys. Okay. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. I'm kind of worried about that now. I have a tendency to overthink and not think about putting some stuff in here. So I think this is gonna be okay. So yeah, I'll just keep this on medium high just for about three more minutes and then it's gonna be turned down. Oh. Ooh, smells so good. I hope this will turn out well. Well, I'm just gonna finish up the sauce here because I think our pasta is almost done. So I'm gonna add maybe about, I don't know, a half a cup. And really what the cream does it kind of softens up the acidity from the tomato uh, sauce, tomato paste, and stuff like that. So we're just gonna let, oh yeah, look at that. So it's not, I wouldn't call it like a cream sauce. So we're just gonna kind of, and my pasta is almost done. So we're just gonna let this, what else was it? Oh yeah, cheese. I forgot, I gotta add par Parmesan cheese. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And then I'll also, I think I was supposed to do this. I'm trying to be as authentic. If you're not supposed to do it right now, I'm not gonna add a lot. I think this will be a good topping for it. Then I'll just chop up some parsley. Okay, there we go. Put this away and then I'm gonna chop up some parsley. Okay, our friends are here. We're getting ready to eat. So you can find this recipe and all of the others at Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen on my YouTube channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and eat. I'll try and get a few more photos, but I can't hold them off any longer. So this is Beaujene sauce over pasta. And next time I might try it with white wine. But anyway, give it a try. So keep gathering around the table and enjoy that time. So again, thank you for following me. Thank you for being in my little kitchen. So from my little kitchen to you, enjoy. Okay, this is the part that I always forget to do on my videos because a lot of you guys have been asking, do I actually eat the food? <laughs> and yes, I do. 
what I'm making for you is pretty much what we're eating that day, that evening, whatever it may be. So, yes, this is good. In fact, I really love these noodles. Mm-mm. Mm. 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 I think the cream sauce really balances out the tomato, the acidity of that. And I think the way you cook the meat for this sauce is really, really good. In fact, I'm gonna tell you the noodle. Where oh yeah, see this word right there? Bucatini, bucatini. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce the noodle, but I tell you, I like this noodle. It is thick, it is hearty, especially when I couldn't find the one that starts with the T, Taligate, or whatever that is, the really nice, hearty, or you know, wide, flat noodles. It's different from an egg noodle. Anyway, that word right there, good noodle for this sauce. Anyway, I'm gonna continue eating because Chris is over at the table eating and enjoying it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And I'm going to have a salad with it, too. So give it a try. In fact, here is Chris. Chris, can you just say hi? Do you like no, it, babe? I can't say hi. I'm eating. <laughs> that means it's good, right? It's very good. Excellent. That means it's a thumbs up, everyone. So go check out my YouTube channel, amyroloffslittlekitchen.com, and go ahead and make some of this.